all to Natural Lifestyle Cooking this afternoon. And my name is Cheryl Lindemann. I'm with Pathway to Health and Dolphin Follow-Up. And uh, I've been working with uh, Lifestyle Cooking for several years. And it's the thrill of my life to see people want to change their lives. And to my right here is Erica. Erica Nedley. And I'm so happy to come in and uh, help with the natural lifestyle cooking that um, Tini has put together. And uh, I just want to let you know that it's a pleasure to be pa a part of Pathway to Health. Yes, it is a pleasure. And we also would like to introduce to you Tini Finland. She's the author of Natural Lifestyle Cooking and has put many hours and years of work into this program. And we're just so thankful to her for the work that she has done. And we're proud to be able to say everything that's presented through this is very scientifically proven and accurate. And uh, she has just dedicated her life to helping people live better. And we're thankful for that to team. So we, I found out uh, just asking the question, we have two people here, am I correct, that have held cooking schools in the past. And I congratulate you for that. And for those of you first time coming, we're trying to motivate you as long as you're willing. I know you can do it. Um, if not I can do it, anybody can <laughs> do it. <laughs> um, why cooking school? And that's a question that sometimes people, why would you want to do a cooking school? Go ahead. Once we've taught people the importance of taking care of our bodies and, and doing better and living better, they are going to need to know how we can do that through cooking. I have a quote here to go just with that uh, from Testimony uh, 7, and it's page 112, 113. He says, In every place where there is a church, so every place, a church, Instructions should be given in regard to the presentation, preparation, preparation of what? Listen, simple, helpful foods. It's black and white, you know. Uh, so we want to teach those that wish to live in accordance with the principles of health reform. And the church members should impart to the people in their neighborhood the light they receive on this subject. So you start with the church, but also remember those around you. And it can be a very intimate relation because you'll find out uh, cooking, it's a way to break barriers. Uh, so that was a good one. Any other reasons? Yes. Go ahead. Well, a lot of people encounter health problems in their life, and then they are much more motivated to look at diet and ways, healthy ways to try to manage or overcome these health problems. And so they're casting about trying to find hands-on ways to, to cook and eat better. We do have a lot of nutritional um, uh, scientific resource. Uh, in our church and overall because of the spirit of prophecy, the Bible, uh, the way we understand the health principle, we have a great amount of the scientific information and resource. So I want to make sure though that as you look at the science that you do um, diligence on looking at the article. Uh, when you learn, you're presenting, uh, make sure your source is adequate, um, and uh, as you apply those principles, compare them to the Bible and the spirit of prophecy. You hear quotes that uh, coffee is good for you, alcohol is beneficial. You know, you. Uh, How are you going to address that? So it's very important for you to learn um, what is the science behind that. That's right, and you know. Once you have helped somebody to regain their health, you will be their friend for life. They are so grateful. I know we did diabetes undone in our church, and one lady brought her blood sugar down to normal levels, and she was just so thankful to, for what she had learned there. And she continues to practice those principles to this day. 
Have you heard the word temperance? Anybody knows the definition of temperance? Self-control. Self yes. Moderation in what? In good things. Moderation in the things that are good for you, in healthy things. And abstinence in things that are not healthy. Um, so as you're looking at that, you're teaching them how to manage changing taste buds. Uh, once you decrease the amount of sodium in diet, you'll find out that other um, tantalizing foods, like your spicy foods, and they will tend to decrease, and they don't have to use as much sugar. A lot of times, people hide the sugar in order to uh, compensate for the high sodium. So as you're going closer to that natural way of cooking, you'll find out that the other desires or appetites will decrease. That's right, and sometimes when you, have, you are doing that, you will find that when you go back to eating something that you used to just love that was sweet, you'll say, oh, this is way too sweet for me. Taste buds, within three months, you can really go completely opposite to when you thought, I can never do that. Yes. Um, one of the reason I really like to do cooking schools is because I mingle with the people. You know, when, when you cook, it seems like you're becoming buddies. I'm going to share this, you share that, and it breaks down this prejudice. Uh, and people come and they ask you questions and they're just very, very, uh, a very nice way to build relations. Uh, everybody likes to cook. So, at least I think everybody. Um, I have four boys. Well, and we know that everybody likes to eat. <laughs> so, they. <laughs> Let's go with that one. Um, okay, I will debate that in a little bit. <laughs> the thing is, uh, Jesus mingled with the people. And when you uh, sh do things together, uh, particularly sharing food, people tend to open up. So, it's a very nice way to do that. I think it's a very popular way. You may not like cooking, but tell me, how many TV shows are there that people look at, okay? So, um, I, I don't know how to transfer it, but I think people don't cook many times because they think they cannot do it. And when you're um, teaching them a recipe that has four ingredients or whatever, it's very simple to, I call cooking, you'll see a recipe coming up with a um, toast. You know, that's going to be part of your cooking class. Mm -hmm. So I think just breaking the concept that I can prepare something, even if I don't bake it or fry it or whatever, you know, I can make it. Uh, and that can be, I'm pretty sure you cook some things. You know, sometimes, Erica, I think we are afraid of what we don't know yeah. and what we're not acquainted with. So um, personally, it's when I do cooking school, it's somehow important for them to realize that you're not born uh, a cook, a chef, um, a, a plant based um, eater. And, you know, by showing them your progress, because you were mentioning earlier, cooking and developing this, it's a process. Yes, it's a journey. It's a journey that we're on. It's a lifelong journey, isn't it? Yeah. Um, I came from Romania, and in our family, we um, serve meat, and uh, I enjoy. Um, I was not a cook. Um, I came when I was 18, and when I um, got my job working in a, a nursing home, they assigned me um, duties in the kitchen, and I was supposed to cook all of this meat and all of that stuff, and that was my first introduction to cooking. Um, and you have to serve every day 25 to 35 to 50 people or whatever. And I learned very quickly that uh, cooking can be very intense. And uh, I met Neil and we went out to eat and I ordered the meat steak dish and he ordered the vegetable plate. And uh, when the waiter came, I thought maybe she should go like this. I because I, I realized maybe I shouldn't have gone that route, but that's, and he was fine with it. Uh, Neil Nedley being my husband, uh, he had a lot of interest in health, and I thought, oh, we'll see where the Lord leads on here. Um, <laughs> I met his mother, and she was an excellent chef. 
Uh, this was 37 years ago. And uh, at that time, vegetarianism was actually a disease. Uh, and people were very apprehensive when you told them, um, I'm a vegetarian. Oh, what are you going to do? You know, how are you going to raise your kids on this diet? Oh, I have to tell you, they're all normal height and everything, and they've been a plant-based since birth. Um, but we learned, I mean, I learned from her how to uh, develop very healthy recipes. It was a um, lacto ovo, so we had seven eggs and two blocks of cheese, and you know, you kind of make a wonderful casserole that melts in your mouth and all of that. And uh, we got married. I guess I won his heart through the stomach. <laughs> but uh, I learned to um, cook vegetarian, and he started doing a residency at Kettering, and uh, he met Dr. DeRose as one of his attendees. And uh, Dr. DeRose was a plant-based plant uh, plant um, vegetarian. And uh, he, Dr. Nelly thought he must be missing something. So he went to the library and tried to do all the research to prove him wrong. And in, by the time he was done with the research, in time, he decided this is the right way to go. This was six months after we got married. He came home and he said, what about uh, changing to a vegan diet, and I thought, sure, we can try it. I had to make my own milk, uh, everything. You couldn't buy anything in the store. Within three months, I started doing cooking schools. And when he finished his residency, we went to Oklahoma and uh, became associated with Lifestyle Center of America. And the hospital, there was an Adventist hospital. The health director wanted cooking schools spring and fall, spring and fall. We connected with lab work. This is what's going to happen with Pathway to Health. Exactly. exactly. People are coming. People are going to be coming to the convention center for two and a half days, and they're going to have lab work drawn and all of this. They're going to be examined by doctors. And then that lab work is going to be sent to your churches because you are health information centers, remember? And so you will be giving that lab work back to the patients. There will be some professional people there helping you with that. And then you're going to offer them health-based seminars. This is one of them. And, and I remember Dr. Sharpenberry said, I had a very easy job. I will go and I will prick their finger, do their little blood finger test, and then they will cry out, what must I do to be saved? <laughs> so people will be very interested in yes. changing some things when they see some of those black blood work and is, is being explained to them. That's right. And when people are in crisis, that's when they're most ready to accept change in their life. So we have a wonderful opportunity. So we started doing those lab works, and then they will come to us, and she said, you can have as many kids as you want, as long as they don't interfere with our cooking school. Because Dr. Nelly would do the first hour of presentation, and some of the other doctors from the hospitals would do that. And then I would come on the second hour and apply some of the concepts. Now, what's nice about the natural lifestyle cooking, Tini put it all together. So you have the health information going on with the recipes, with the instruction, everything you need to do to run the cooking school. And that is really, really helpful. And it helps to take a lot of the anxiety out of it, really. Yeah. I have appreciated her work so much because you know that you're presenting something that is accurate. And you all know that we can Google a lot of things on the internet, but they're not necessarily accurate or scientific. So we as want to seek sources that are. Yes. Um, as part of your testimony, as you're going to present some of this, it, it can be only a two, three minute introduction, but I know that most of you, once you change to a certain way of eating, you notice some benefits. It's very important to notice. You know, I've done this, I've done that, you know, I've noticed this, I noticed that, and help them see what are the benefits of a vegetarian diet. Uh, what are the results? And then um, the only other thing I want to point out is people are going to watch you. So if you do um, 
present some material and then you don't live that. I, uh, somebody was just mentioning before, and I've seen it before, uh, people from the cooking school would meet me in the grocery store, would just bump into each other, and you <laughs> notice they kind of look in the cart and see what, <laughs> oh, what are you going to do with that? And why, you know, you don't want to be <laughs> embarrassed. You tell them one way, and then you, they see you doing completely opposite to what you are teaching. It's very nice to have that follow through. Um, to Excellent. be yes, credible. Yeah. Do, yeah. In, in other words, yeah. yeah, practice what you preach. That's a very good way to put it because yeah. uh, we, you know, we are a witness to people, whether we're doing what's right or whether we're doing what's wrong. We are a witness always. Yeah. So do you want to uh, show them the, uh, okay. the next step on that? I don't know how you want to. Maybe it's I go from work. here. <laughs> okay, so natural lifestyle cooking brought to us by Ernestine Finley. And these are the um, part, parts of the kit that you will get. And uh, maybe, Erica, you could show them first the cookbook. That, of course, is what everybody is really excited about. It has a lot of healthy tasting plant-based recipes. Um, beverages, breads, breakfast, and entrees, salads, sandwiches, soups, vegetables, and desserts. And uh, they're fairly easy to follow. Um, you got your ingredients on the left, instructions on the right, and it has the pictures of what you're um, going to make. And those are placed basically in the same order that they are in the workbook. So we have a workbook that goes along with that. And, and this is what, this is like, what you'll yeah. want to really share with your, with your friends at the cooking school. This is what we would like to have every participant that comes. At ABC right now is ten dollars, uh, and you can get the there will be a price. discount. There will be a discounted At price least for that. At twenty percent off, yeah. I think, yeah. if not more. Uh, what's nice about this? It gives you the information um, that she is presenting in a way that you can take it home. You can refer. You can fill up your um, blank spaces and have the information with you when you go home. And that's where we encourage everybody to do that. Because he says, you know, for example, what's the benefit of rye bread, of rice, of this, and you have it all, it's all in there. And you will be amazed at how many opportunities, once you learn this, how many opportunities you have to share. So if you're anticipating to do a cooking school, I would recommend just pour through those books before you do it even, and you will learn so much. Okay. It, it makes it easy because it breaks it down per session so you can pull together what you want. And if, if there is a recipe that you're more comfortable with, please feel free to incorporate it. You don't have to yes. just stay with that. Um, or if you want to go with breakfast first before the breads, uh, that's okay. Every, every lesson stands on its own. And then the third one, it's where you, you would be benefited because that gives you step-by-step step on how to prepare for, um, I think you will break yes, down, yes. down a little bit. Yeah, there's, and there's a section in there that actually does give the whole, the whole class suggestion of how to do it, I interspersing the demonstrations along with the lectures. Mm -hmm. And if you have somebody that you like to go back and forth with, like we're doing here today, it's a wonderful way to do that. One of you does a demonstration, and then the other one does some lecture. And then, of course, we're going to talk about the whole team effect with a, with a cooking school as well. So, and then there's a set of uh, DVDs, too. Well, let's see if I and I think that's back in the back there. <laughs> there's a set of seven... Uh, classes, 30-minute sessions, if you so choose to buy that. That makes it even simpler. You got actually the demonstration recipe right here. 
So you just play her and she demonstrates, explains yeah. what she's yeah. doing. So if you're not, you know, really comfortable, you've never done it before and you're not sure just how to do it, that, that's an excellent tool to have. And she's also got some advertisement uh, materials as well that are available. Mm -hmm. So, okay, let's go to the next slide. The basic rationale for all health ministry is our love for people, isn't it? And the desire for them to have the fullness of life that Jesus so freely offers. And that's what Jesus has asked us to do. Okay? By our lifestyle choices, we can add an extra 10 to 12 years. Did you know that? Or we can subtract an extra 10 or 12 years, too. So... Diet and nutrition is just so important, and in fact, it's linked right up there with exercise as important. You can live longer and happier when you make the right lifestyle choices. And by those choices, we, contri we can also contribute to premature aging if we don't make the right choices. And uh, Lou... Luigi Fontana, physician and co-director of the Longevity Research Program at Washington University in St. Louis, says that approximately 25% of our risk of death is due to genetics. So what does that tell you? How much percent is lifestyle choices? 75% is lifestyle choices even more so than exercise, okay? And conducting your la natural lifestyle cooking class enables you to cooperate with the Creator in sharing His eternal principles. And when we're dealing with something that's going to benefit somebody physically, it's just miraculous how when they hear that, they are so open to what Jesus says and to learning more even about Jesus when they learn that he cares for us that much, okay? Grains, fruits, nuts, and vegetables constitute the diet chosen for us by our Creator. These foods, prepared in as simple and a natural manner as possible, are the most helpful and nourishing. How many of us think that, like, on a Sabbath, Sabbath dinner, we need to make these big fancy meals? We don't have to. Simple, simple food. And research is showing that the less refined food is, the better. The more in its fresh state. It's just like if you have an apple. A whole apple is going to be much more nutritious than even applesauce or an apple pie. And so, you know, that kind of gives us a guideline to go by, doesn't it? Eat it in its most pure form, okay? And these foods impart a strength, a power of endurance, and a vigor of intellect that are not afforded by a more complex and stimulating diet. And I know in our last session we talked about the fact that uh, when we do evangelistic meetings, we want people to be able to think and make decisions and when we have a healthy lifestyle and eat healthy foods we're much more able to think and make those healthy decisions okay so the kit that is available includes of course the cookbook workbook instructors manual and the DVDs that we showed you and then they have advertising brochures newspaper articles and Erica, could you just mention that uh, newspaper article that's in that instructor's manual there? Yeah, what I was uh, noticing in the advertising book under cooking instructor manual, um, it has articles that you can take to the newspaper. They're already for newspaper uh, press release. So it has samples. You just have to, they're four different sample letters that you can just, the church section of your newspapers, it's usually free, so the advertisement will not cost. 
uh, if you convince them that this is something for the community and whatever. And she has put it very nicely. You just put your uh, instructor's name and the location and the date, and that can help um, very much with uh, promoting it in, in the um, community. Um, the Facebook and Twitter and some of that, you know, is fine, but check to see if your church has a web page. Also, uh, with the newer um, generation, they like to check the pa web pages and see what, what's available. So you want to make sure you include that. Yes, and in, that's right. In today's world, we must use that media format. And uh, radio spot announcements, and uh, we were talking earlier about that you are so fortunate here to have, uh, what is it, good, good news television? And that would be an excellent format to use to help with your advertising. And word of mouth. Don't forget word of mouth. Okay? Next slide. So what are the classes for natural lifestyle cooking? We've gone over those briefly, but we'll just go over them real briefly again. Homemade bread making, making breakfast a better meal, meal balancing, the advantage of a plant-based diet, simple suppers, we've already talked about simple foods, holidays and special occasions. And I just want to mention here that I think the way food is served, to be made attractive is so important to people because we eat with our eyes kind of, don't we? If it doesn't look appetizing, we're not going to want to try it. And then simple healthful desserts. One of the hardest thing is to decide what to present. Because many times, when you're looking at what the people are dealing with, uh, you know, your obesity, your um, diabetes, your hypertension, um, the heart disease, and all of those things, and, and you're looking at it, okay, you're saying, let's see, what can I start that I feel comfortable that you know a lot of people are interested in? And I like the home-made br bread making, but I, how do you feel about starting with that as the first one? Would, I think there are a couple of, go ahead. What she said is, uh, the lady over here just said that nobody bakes bread anymore, and that is really much, much the truth. And so maybe you want to start with something that would be more appealing to them. Though I like the bread making because there are a couple of things you have to realize. When you have that loaf baking in yes. your house afterwards, you know when they're telling you to sell a house, they say bake some bread before they come in. Is that aroma that you just cannot help it? it it's, it's amazing. Uh, so, you know, that I, I like the bread making. Also, it gives you hands-on, which increase your brain capacity, the 3D work. Kids love to play with um, the dough, so you, it can become a very fun home-based uh, activity that everybody likes it, but I would do that later on. So establish your, your uh, friend bases, uh, have them coming on, and then you can come up with an, a, a cooking school that has to do with bread baking. Depends what time of the year, but you have sweet breads, you have uh, muffins, you, you know, you can put it all together in this bread making idea. And it can be very nice. Now, a lot of people have uh, bread making machines and they got it as a gift or they got it at a very good price and it's sitting there on the shelf <laughs> you know, um, just resurrect a couple of recipes that are very good. My mom uses the bread machine to mix everything. She takes it out and then she does whatever she wants with that dough. You know, be creative on, on that because that bread, if you go to get a healthy loaf of bread, you're paying four to six dollars for a loaf. Um, and then you can make two loaves for 50 cents at home. Um, so that's very true and you know depending on where you live we spent several years in Montana and when we first moved there I quickly found out that about the only bread that I could find in the store was white bread and made with refined flour 
So I honed up my baking skills and got busy baking my own bread at that time. That's when I really got into it. And uh, it's just, it's very nutritious and healthful. So let's look at then uh, number two, would be making breakfast a better meal. What do you think is the meal mostly skipped in the United States? Breakfast, and you find out that, I, what are the excuses? No time, no time. And or ate too late, too much the night before, and there, I'm not hungry. Um, I don't know what to cook. That's another thing. And oh, they have it at the office. They have coffee and donuts. And so I really don't need to eat breakfast because when I get to work, I'll have a break in two hours and I can eat my co have my coffee and donuts. Um, so she has suggested a schedule for that, and then I will add my two cents to breakfast. Go ahead. I uh, usually share that with them. Okay, okay. So for this uh, making breakfast a better meal. And this is in the instruction book. It just gives yeah. you an idea on how so on you can do 59. that. Mm -hmm. On page 59, start with a lecture. Introduction to breakfast in the workbook. So it's referring you to the workbook to page 29 and 30, and that'll be about 10 minute talk. Yeah, and usually, 10 minutes. yeah, um, uh, what are the benefits of breakfast? Enhanced mood, better scholastic uh, um, performance, and you have all of that information right there. It improves um, memory, enhanced memory. Um, all of those things are beneficial. So whenever you choose a topic, you bring out the benefits of that. That's right, that's right. And then that is followed with a five minute demonstration. And the demonstration can be very simple. Do you have yes. that recipe right there? Um, Let me see, when is that? It's down the line just a little bit. Keep going, keep going. Probably well near the end. <laughs> That's advertising okay. there. And we'll go on that in just a moment. Okay. So anyway, but um, it's a simple demonstration, something that you know everybody will like. Don't do something exotic. Like, like right here. Yeah, don't do something exotic. Um, this, this one is, is applesauce on toast with fresh fruit. Um, or you can use fresh fruit in place of the applesauce. But you use two slices of whole wheat bread. You can make it yourself or you can buy it at the store. Just look at the ingredients. You wanted the whole wheat grain to increase the fiber. So if you're looking at every ingredient, you can bring out what's the benefit. Uh, second one. Okay, that's two tablespoons of peanut butter or almond butter. And I know some people are allergic to peanuts. So almond butter is an excellent alternative. And besides that, it has a lot of calcium in it. Uh, think of protein buffs. You know, they're saying, oh, we have to get our protein. We cannot be on the plant base because we're not getting protein. Oh, you got it right there, almond butter and peanut butter. Add some of that and you'll find out that uh, the amount of protein, it's what you need for the today's fuel, uh, the amount of protein needed for the day. Um, as you play with the, go the ahead. The applesauce, the applesauce, one and a half cups of applesauce. And there's two types of applesauce that you can buy in the store. One is very sweetened and one is natural with no added sugar. So to be healthful, we're gonna choose the no added sugar. The other thing is, you know, you, you can show them right then with, with that simple recipe, um, how to make a quick applesauce. Fall comes, you got very nice sweet apples. You just peel them, four or five apples, put them in a little bit of water or with a little bit of apple juice concentrate. Yes and you just, you don't have to add sugar with that. Just cook them a little bit. You don't even blend them. Just mash them with oh, your potato it's, it's masher. it's delicious if it's a chunky applesauce. And it's fresh, yeah. and you got right there um, two cups of applesauce that were four apples that you're gonna throw away because you didn't get to eat them. 
Uh, and that's all. You don't have to think of the olden days when we can apples, where you had six bushels of apples and you sit there all in a row and you got 300 jars of things and you have to boil them and all of that. We don't need that, you know, because we go to the store and we buy four apples. I don't have to get, uh, you know, f f uh, in from the orchard where we went and picked That's them right. up. Yeah. So it's very important to be creative on that and help them see how they can make it. And then you've got your banana there. That has some good um, potassium, potassium in it. Sliced strawberries. And then you've got some more protein there as well. And your natural and oils. O omega-3. Omega-3. Brain power. You got it right there in the walnuts. And guess what? Today I have it this way. Tomorrow I'm going to use other fruit, blueberries, excellent source of antioxidants, um, memory and all the benefits. Uh, instead of walnuts, we're going to use some flax seed, we can use some chia seeds, or we can use hemp seeds, almond, almonds, you know, be creative. You can do the same concept of, okay, what, was this difficult, a difficult recipe? You teach the kids. The problem is they don't see what they can prepare, they think they don't have time, and they think it's very complex. That um, crock pot that most of the time sits on the bottom shelf all the way somewhere that you pick it up once a year, put it on the counter, and at the night when you're going, you got one cup of oat groats, or one cup of millet, or one cup of uh, crack wheat, or one cup of, you know, whatever you have at hand, multigrain, whatever, put it in that crock pot, and then in the morning, I come up with the same topics, to toppings, or I can have little jars, you know, I, I put them on a little tray, and I have all the dry fruit, I have all the nuts, um, you get um, like uh, goji berries and other th things that are a little uh, dry uh, blueberries, you know, things that are more, a little more different. And you keep them in those little jars and you take in one, two tablespoons from there, you s keep them, you put them right back on the shelf. It doesn't take any yes. cleaning because everything is right there in jars already. And, and it's and an, <laughs> a, a delicious breakfast and... Uh, very nourishing, and when you wake up to that smell of the oats cooking, oh, it's delicious. Uh, the students can do that in their dormitories with that. Get them your grandkids, little two cup uh, slow cooker, and it's a very nice gift for Christmas. And give them a little package with, with a, um, a mix, um, the mixed uh, oats uh, grains, the mixed grains and then tell them, put a fourth cup of that with one cup of water and you got your breakfast. Uh, the problem is the families are running each in a different direction and it seems like mornings are very hectic. So you're right, it may not be any time for a cooking breakfast, but if you take two minutes and look at the night before, hey, what do I have in the pantry? Pancakes, they don't take a long time to make. But if I don't have what I need for it, the same thing with the waffles. If you don't have what you need, it's very hard. I make double batches of things and I stick them in the freezer. And then when I want uh, um, some waffles, I just put them in a waffle, uh, in a toaster, mm -hmm. uh, in a toaster, and I have fresh waffles in the morning. So the main thing is planning. It's very nice family time to have that meal together if you can at breakfast. Yeah. Go Mark, ahead. Do you ever use a, a blender for yeah. fruit smoothies for breakfast? Yes, we definitely like that. Okay. And she has using a funny a, story about that. Use, <laughs> yes, using a blender for fruit smoothies. Excellent, excellent. And it's good for people on the run, you know, if you, if you have to have something. And you can also put a little bit of oatmeal in that and make it even more and nut, nutrition yes. and nuts yes um I, I had i do have a story about the blender i was doing a cooking school and the electricity went off as i was using the blender and i can probably leave the rest up to your imagination and yes it did happen that way uh, the guys went to the back room and they got the electricity going again and 
everything in the blender was all over the ceiling, the walls, and the people in the front row. <laughs> so yeah, you have to you have to be careful. But uh, blenders are a wonderful, wonderful thing for vegetarians. Um, I'm very passionate about breakfast. Um, I have cooked, as I said, for many, many years, and uh, I was trying to put together a cookbook. And uh, I had a friend, a chef, and said, I'm amazed of this breakfast idea that you have. You know, it's just, I, I just don't know what to prepare for breakfast. Why don't you put together a cookbook on breakfast? So um, it took a while, but I did come up with Brighten Up Breakfast, which is very much um, breakfast cookbook. And you're talking about beverages and smoothies. There is a whole section on here, and some of them are, um, I had four boys, um, and this is Justin's favorite. He says peanut butter smoothie because he loved peanut butter, and he loved to come in and play with a blender in, in the kitchen. So he came up with his uh, own concussion of it. But I came up with something like omega-3 blast smoothie because you're trying to incorporate as much omega-3 brain function for young kids. So I use the smoothie to hide the spinach. So you take carob, carob powder and you put it in with the spinach and you'll find out, you, and blue, blueberries, it's a dark, it looks like chocolate. You'll never know that there's spinach in there. So be creative with those things. And you but know, spinach in a smoothie is really very good. Yes, and the same thing, tasty. they're kale and some other things. So yes. you'll, uh, but just a side note, you know, I, I can relate so to smoothies anyway, for in breakfast. Your, in your book here, then it goes like demonstration, lecture, demonstration, lecture. So you're not just running everything all together. And then when you're done with your demonstrations, and she has like four for this breakfast one, but you could do three. If, you're, if your budget is tight and you think you better not do so many, you can do three. As you choose what to, um, for breakfast, you know, think of something very simple like this. Then you can go, Americans really think pancakes, you know, that's American way. You have to have some kind yes, of a pancake. Yes. Or waffles. Uh, or waffles. Uh, but the problem is not everybody um, may have a waffle iron. So I, I like that, but breakfast it's a little easier to go. And then think of something savory. They have to have some kind of a savory dish. So um, she has some nice options in her uh, cookbook that you can go with. Yes, some, some kind nice of options. a tofu. Um, Concept, you then know, yeah, you, you can. Since you mentioned waffle iron, I just want to point out you know, when I do waffles, I do a healthy variety of waffles, not your usual, you know, white flour and, and mm -hmm. all that. And I find that they do not do well in a lot of the waffle irons. You need to have a classic waffle iron because they do not. They just don't do well in the in the wider spaces and and that that some of the waffle irons we have now. So, what, what's the classic waffle? Uh, it has a deeper hole, oh. isn't it? The small and griddle? small, the small. small, the small, uh, not the not the deep one, not the yeah, tall not one. Yeah, not the deep wide one. Yeah, yeah, not the Belgian one. Belgian. The that's the word yeah. I wanted. Thank you. Yeah, yeah the flatter mm -hmm. one, um, and uh, and they're smaller. Th much smaller. What, however, you find out that when you do the whole grain waffle, it does take longer to cook. I don't know if you noticed. Yes. Um, and uh, plan accordingly. I, I did my first cooking school. I, I used waffles, and I didn't realize it's going to take eight minutes per waffle. And I, I saw that whole church full. I thought, we will never get to taste waffles. So we quickly <laughs> changed to something else. But um, prepare, for, don't do my mistake. Prepare ahead and know exactly what the recipe demands. <laughs> Um, and the demonstration, are you going to mention a couple of things on the demonstration or do you want me to say something? Well, when we, uh, you fill in the cracks after I do, and um, when we um, set up our trays, of course, what she mentioned, know what you're going to do. And that means basically make sure that you've practiced at home and done a dry run on your, on your stuff. And most recipes, you're going to want to bring a finished example of anyway because it's going to take too long to try to make sure that everything's cooked just right and ready to serve at your dem at your 
tasting time. So you'll have a tray and you go very carefully through your list of ingredients. You have your recipe typed out there or written, handwritten, however you do it, and make sure that all your ingredients are there on the tray. And if you have to leave something in the refrigerator or you're using the blender for something before and then you're going to make sure that you need it for number four demonstration, then you can write yourself a note there. And whoever's getting that tray ready to bring to you, because you're going to operate as a team. And uh, the way Teeny does it is just beautiful. She has a whole kitchen crew back there working, getting things ready for her next demonstration. So she doesn't have to keep going back to the kitchen or anything. And she has somebody up there beside her. And Erica mentioned that earlier today, too, how you want to have somebody beside you as you're doing your demonstrations. And <coughs> so they just help Th you that's keep everything a, a, together. A little bit with the personnel. The concept is that somebody is on your side every time a demonstration. Yeah. I had a, a gentleman. He, he said, I just love to cook, but I don't like to be up front. So whatever he did, he did it in the back. So anyhow, he was my helper. So whenever you need something, you just point or, you know, you want to have everything, but sometimes you need an extra hand. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you have that assistant with you at all times. Then you have people in the back that prepare the food that needs to be sampled, maybe two people. I always had a dishwasher lady. Very because important. Otherwise, your dishes stack up and you can't find As anything. soon as I was done with the cooking, uh, demonstration but you know I did seven eight in a class so you know I, I was moving very fast I guess my Romanian <laughs> let's do as much as we can so I would pass it on to her and she would immediately uh, clean it and put it everything otherwise when you're done with a cooking demonstration and all of the food sampling and all of the trays and you go back in the kitchen it's like this and you had a long day preparing all of this are sore. <laughs> it, that is number one and I had a lady that she said I just love to be part of this I just love to wash dishes so see who in your church if nothing else because you have the dishwasher but if you don't keep up with it it's it, it's a ton of, of things that you you have to present go ahead so the food that's demoed the food that's demoed to the, the participants is not the food you're you're preparing before them. You prepare that in the kitchen and bring it out for them to sample. And that's why you're kind of tired because all of the samples are made ahead of time. Okay? And now, I may have one thing that, you know, um, like a, for example, I have done stir fries and I have a small group. I'm not going to prepare ahead of time. I have everything chopped because stir fry is done in five minutes. So I show them the right product, I take it back, we put it in a pretty dish, and we come and serve it over rice. Okay? But your rice is already cooked. But rice, it's already cooked. Now, the same thing with a smoothie. I would blend the smoothie, I'll give it to the ladies in the back, they'll put it in little cups and bring it out. So there are a couple of things like that that I'm going to, but all my baking, all of my um, breakfast ideas and everything, you know, it's already done ahead of time. And when you come to church, if I demonstrate something and it's a finished project, I use that as a gift. You know, door prize, mm -hmm. that's a very nice um, thing to say, hey, the door prize, I just demonstrated this. It could be a loaf of bread or it could be something else that you have made, a dessert or, or whatever. Or some granola. Granola in a bag. One Christmas, know? my husband and I gave a little bag of granola to all of our church members. It's ex yeah. Now, uh, this is what I was going to mention. It, it depends on how you're making it because oats, it's not very expensive, and that can be your number one. Mm -hmm. Depends how much nuts you're adding and dry fruit and whatever. But many times, I like to go with a simple granola, mm -hmm. your basic a little bit of sweetener and a little bit of your oil and... Um, the oats and a couple of walnuts and whatever. Maybe a little bit of coconut. Or yeah, it's things that are not very expensive. But you find out, you go to the store and you pay $7 a pound or a, for a little bag, you pay a lot and it's quite expensive and it has a lot of sugar. So it's nice to make it, you bake it overnight, 
It's very simple to work with. I think we have a recipe. Yes, if we, we have do. time to show it. We do. Um, so, okay. Let's I'm have so them stand up and just kind of stretch for a minute before we do that. Yeah, that's your halftime. Yeah, that was my signal yeah. to turn the TV off. <laughs> so, uh, eating healthy on a budget. That is a challenge for a lot of people because we, one rule is never go to the store hungry. It's really true <laughs> because you will buy things that you don't need. But if you have a budget that you're working with, there are foods like oatmeal, potatoes, that you can really get quite inexpensive. Rice. And it's rice. A very um, rice and beans, I would say, are yes. very good. And you have such an array of lentils, garbanzos, and all of that. The only thing is you need to teach them how to properly cook. That's right. Um, and a good substitute for rice would be quinoa because you can explain to them how quinoa is a complete protein in itself. Um, helping them see in the grocery store, you know, they have um, canned beans, for example. You know, we're talking mm -hmm. about beans. You're looking at 80 cents to a dollar to 50 cents, depending what you're getting, what kind, and whatever. Teach them how to read labels. And the main thing would be the sodium versus the calorie ratio. Because when you're looking and you see 100 calories, but 170 milligrams of sodium, that is very high. So whatever you're, when you're teaching them a basic rule, it's make sure that the sodium is lower than the calories. Okay, so just a couple of things like that to help them realize. Now one can of beans, that could make a um, very nice meal for a couple of people. And that is not very expensive. Teaching them again how to season them and how to work with it. Uh, yeah. it's a, or it's even a how to cook the dry beans. Yes. And uh, um, the same thing with, uh, I mean, dry beans, one of those packages is $1.50 or whatever, and you can really make a few dishes out of that. Yes. Uh, one of the bigger problems I see with American um, culture is um, you have the leftover, and they stay at leftovers till you have to throw it in the trash. <laughs> so by teaching them how to take those leftover beans and create a new dish, how to take that leftover rice and prepare it for breakfast, you know, the leftover composition that it's appealing to eat them again, you find well, out it that- it doesn't seem like leftovers because you've made a new dish out of it. So yeah. instead of cooking a huge recipe because you think oh, I'm going to have it made now for the whole week. You find out day three is getting to be questionable that you're enjoying day four. Uh, I, I cannot eat any more of that. Uh, get your basic stuff cooked. Like for example, when I cook the rice, mm -hmm. I use the short grain rice. Okay. Mm -hmm. So I make a huge pot of short grain rice. Now I make out of that rice, because I cook it on Sunday, then I make breakfast rice pudding, I make a, a patties with rice, I cook, you know, stir fry with rice, then you can make um, the enchiladas with enchiladas. rice, you know. So all of that, it's, but I, 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 the only thing I cooked was the rice. So is the putting it back in the kitchen in a new format. And I think, you know, when push comes to shove, we probably all waste a lot of money in our cooking. Yes? I was going to say the blender and the freezer are my friends because if I'm getting fruit that I know I'm going to be flying out, I'm not going to eat it or whatever, I just uh, stick it in the blender and then I get little small cups, <coughs> put it in that, put it in the freezer, and then when I want a smoothie, there it is, and I do the same thing with leftover beans or vegetables or whatever. I just blend them up and freeze them, and then when I make a soup, I just throw it in and put some um, spices in. So when it's going to the end, blend and freeze. Excellent, excellent. She said uh, the blender is her friend. 
leftover fruits, freeze them up, put them in a little cup or something, and put them in the, in the freezer. And even your vegetables, you can do that too. Yes. Uh, before I go on a trip and I have leftover stuff, I go through, the, I put it in the freezer. So the leftover I. blueberries, the leftover, you know, or if you buy something a little too much, just remember the freezer. It's very easy way out. Yes. You can put whole limes and whole lemons in the freezer. I haven't done that, but. Yeah. You know, our sister, our sister here says she has worked with Inner City. Would you like to share something uh, in about a minute or so, what you have found helpful to teaching health, uh, inexpensive? I think the biggest challenge for, I think the biggest challenge is uh, changing taste buds. And so it doesn't really matter until you kind of convince people to try that you're going to be in a situation where why would I want to eat that? Yeah. So, and, and then figuring out budget and, and frequently. Many, many times they use it as an excuse. Yes. I think, you know, it's too pricey or too costy. Then. Well, and we broke down at one point in time and did a price of the favorite food versus the price of the new food and sometimes it would be you know 10 cents difference and so they built it up in their mind of um, that it was going to be more and then finding out in your local area where you can get things at a fantastic price um, uh, is those valuable. specialty stores yes what you're saying look for the um, farmers asian market. farmers market um bountiful uh, baskets yeah yeah uh, yeah the 99 cent store, I have seen organic tomatoes, organic spinach. So uh, look around for uh, the, uh, it's particular like cashews, you know, they're, it's expensive. Tofu, you may pay $3 to $4 for a block, a certain store. Look at Sprouts, you know, it's much cheaper. Look at an Asian store and you'll find much better price. So yeah. do a little price comparison in the neighborhood and find out where you can get them at a better price. That's right, that's right. And just a hint, um, I know that you can get <coughs> cashews and a lot of these things much cheaper in an Indian store. If your area has oh, yeah. um, Indian or Pakistani yeah. stores. How about the, the Asian stores? Too? Asian yeah. stores, yes, yes. And they often sell these things much cheaper. So that's an option as well. Um, okay. The, the oh, we lost our signal. The cooking made simple. I don't know what was left. Oh, we want to show the we video. We want to show the video. I think we just hit play whenever we're. Um, the the uh, cooking made simple where you have, particularly in the beginning, get recipes that are very simple four to six ingredients, um, help them see that it's not going to mess up your whole kitchen, that you don't, uh, showing them that they can make a burger faster than going to the store. Um, and, f you know, you can make a whole batch a recipe and, again, stick it in the freezer, um, and then when they want it, they can pull it out, and it's going to be healthy, cheap, and faster than going to the store. The most people that are changing their taste buds don't do well moving them straight to tofu. Yes. So yes. yes. Straight food, normal foods, four to five ingredients mm -hmm. is what you're saying. Yes. Yeah. Um, okay, we're going to show a quick uh, cooking demonstration of teeny. Uh, do we have sound? That's the question. She's showing how to make granola. Are you looking quick oats with germs, some coconut? I think she had uh, some sweetener and like honey and water. Um, I th and I think she used honey. Is that gentleman here? Um, I don't know, but um, we'll look at that in just a moment, I think. And she had um, some oil. Let me see. Done with our brains, tell us to do. So that uh, you pretty much got oats, the wheat germ, the coconut, walnuts, uh, and then the liquid, which is a little bit of olive oil, water, honey, vanilla, and a little bit of salt. So, um, and then you take that uh, granola. Sh do you wanna try to listen to it? No. I don't think you can hear it. 
Yeah, and then you take that, you put it on a cookie uh, sheets and bake it overnight at 170 degrees the whole night. You don't have to stir, you don't have to do anything in the morning, it's all ready to go. Uh, and this is what, similar to that, I do a cooking demonstration for our mental uh, depression and anxiety participants. And there is something about them to see and make a granola and take it home when they leave. This is showing such a great accomplishment and you'll find out uh, a lot of people that don't cook, when you just put seven, eight ingredients and you came up with a final product that tastes very good, you, they're convinced. So it's very important to find something that people like, uh, that is, like she said, not, don't start with tofu, unless it's extremely well prepared and uh, that takes a little bit. Um, any questions? Let's find out as we go on. I want to find out what do you see a challenge with you putting a cook, uh, cooking school in your community? What's going to take for you to run one? What do you see the challenge? The money, okay? I would start with asking the people to m provide for a recipe in your church. Um, you provide the oats the flour or I give you this recipe and give me the ingredients I need for that recipe. I came in, the, uh, in I moved to a new church mm -hmm. and uh, that's when I became a plant-based vegetarian myself. I moved in the church and I said, I would like to do a cooking school, but I, I really don't have what it takes. So I had one person made this, one person made that, one person made that. We came together and we had seven recipes, just that for the night. But you know, it also makes your work easier if you do that, because if I prepare one dish, I can probably afford that. I might so, not be able to afford to do five, but if I have Erica do one, you do one, you do one. So no. then you become more like the coordinator and you're making sure that um, the recipes are made. Um, and again, if you budget, I would say probably 100 to $150, you'll do very well. Yes. Um, because you're not gonna feed the, feed, feed the convention center. No, you know? no. You're looking, most of the time you have no more than 30 people in, in the class and the samples are small. You're not gonna feed them a whole meal. You don't advertise as a meal. You're advertising as sample tasting, okay? So as long as you taste a little bit, so two re one or two recipes would serve more than serve everybody that's there. Go ahead. I would worry about liability because I know potlucks fall under one thing. If you're advertising to the public or having non-church members come in, I don't know if you have to have food handlers, cards, and you know, if there's a liability, if there's allergy or someone gets sick. Even if you buy like a tainted mayonnaise, and you know, straight from Trader Joe's or Safeway or whatever, and you make it right there and it's not out of the refrigerator or anything like that, but something happens. I'm not sure, you know, what the liabilities are with that. I have um, advertised all of my classes as an educational program. And yes. when they come through, um, they know, they saw the recipe, what I have prepared it's right there on the on, on the, they all the ingredients and I make a note if anybody's allergic to any of the stuff please don't take and when I handle the food I mean um, my hair goes up and you know uh, the proper handling you pretty much know you wash your hands and you do all of that and whatever but it's up there are definitely people that are very sensitive of eating out even they don't like but it's similar to the same I process. I don't know what's happening to the Chinese restaurant down the road. I lost your sound. Uh, you know, when you go there, you go ahead, batteries down in the home. Okay, um, then there's another way to look at it also. You can have these people that you have sharing recipes will be part of your team, so they will be very educated. And it's probably a good idea to prepare your food in that facility. And, and that'll avoid a lot of questions about okay. it, too. Any other questions? Do they have any other 
Any other questions that you see? Again, we want you to be excited and willing to go out there and do something. Those cooking schools are an excellent source to, to connect with the community that you work and you live in. Um, in, our home, uh, in our church, we did those cooking schools. So you said w w we did the lab work. They came back. We did four cooking schools. We had a uh, lecture and whatever. And after that, we gave a questionnaire and a uh, survey and see what they want. And they could sign up for a follow-up class. One of the follow-up class was food, friends, and Bible study. And we held that in our home. So people will come home once a month, and then we I would have new recipes for them, uh, a little conversation around the dining table, and then we'll go in the living room and we'll study the Bible together. And we pretty much studied uh, the book of Daniel, starting with chapter 1 and the connection. And it became a very um, a sought and looked to program that we have carried for a year and a half afterwards. And then new people will come in after other cooking schools and if we travel we just postpone it by a month or whatever you're not tied down to it but it's another way to com uh, connect with your community you know another thing i was just thinking uh about the concern about uh legalities and so forth also you are not selling food and that makes a big difference as well but there are and states vary from state to state what their standards are and we need to be making sure that our churches meet those local standards, whatever they are, of cleanliness and taking care of your kitchen. Any other questions? Suggestions? Testimony, anything that you have done that you would like to share? Go ahead. When are we going to find out how to get the, uh, the three books as a package, as a presentation package? OK. Uh, I've been talking with John and with Teeny, and Teeny would like us to, as much as possible, put in a, a large bulk order. It'll make shipping much cheaper, because if she ships 100 books, it's going to be cheaper than shipping 10 books, 10 different directions, you know. I understand what you're saying when it comes around to the actual presentation of the class. Right. But those of us that are going to be doing the presenting, we need to get through that material. We need to get into our own kitchens and make that thing up so we know how this thing works. Yes, you do. Before yes, you we do. even get there. We can't be having you the can't book show wait. up for no. the class a week before. No, no, no. No, you cannot do that. There's a couple different ways that can be done. If you want to do it immediately, there are books available at the ABC. Otherwise, we can, once this is finished and we look at our records and everything and see how many churches are wanting to do this seminar, we can order a small order of books for the presenters. I, be I believe that within two weeks, every church has to have an idea of what they want to do. So I think that's a good starting point. Y and we do encourage you to decide. That way you have time to prepare together. Um, making the uh, demonstration trays is something that I didn't touch on. I don't think we did. But um, preparing is very important to make sure that those demonstration trays are complete, that are easy to see, use uh, clear glass to uh, present, have some kind of a mirror or a camera set up. It's very important for people to see what it looks like. When you're saying I'm mixing this and I'm whisking this to a certain level, they want to see why are the cooking shows so popular? People see you, you got it, it's right there, it's visual. So um, if you can set up a straight camera like you see here, it's coming from above the right on, on the food that you're mixing is very important. If not, you can have somebody make you a mirror. Um, they're fairly um, simple. Uh, if you have somebody in your church that knows what they're doing, you know, to, to put it together. Uh, but they're, uh, because if you have to buy one, it's very expensive. So we have made ours um, using one of those um, 
a billboard like what do you call what did we have another yeah what chalkboard. chalkboard yeah you can use a chalkboard and put a mirror instead and then you have the legs to screw on to the table y and then you can tilt it yeah so uh, uh, come up with a creative way to to have a mirror that's very very important um, the other thing with the uh, uh, trays, it helps you, it, it helps me visualize as I present this uh, recipe that I have the mixing bowl and the bowl with the ingredients and I have everything and I walk before I, uh, before I present, I walk through it in my mind how I see myself r because that's when you find out, oh, I need that whisk. It's nothing worse than when you're up there and you realize, oh, I left the whisk in the kitchen. Oh, so yeah, yeah. So you want to have everything that is related to that recipe and walk through it. Okay, I'm going to need three mixing bowls, two spoons, one, you know, that recipe is already too complex. <laughs> but uh, that's what I was going to say. Okay, and interspersed in your cooking class, you're going to give a lot of health principles. I like the acronym that uh, Tini uses. It's called wellness, eight laws of health. Number one is water, exercise, lifestyle, love or trust in God, nutrition, environment, sunshine, and sleep. All of these things are important to our health. And a lot of people have no idea how lack of sleep affects their health. They have no idea how eating sweets. They may be diabetic and not even know it. And in this part of the country, and in the part of the country where I live, Texas, diabetes is epidemic. And a lot of people are diabetic and don't even know it, but it's because of their diet. So you have such an opportunity to just help them change their lives and feel so much better. And uh, we just, pray and we'll be praying for your success as you go out to your churches and um, share the good news with your neighborhoods. Well, then may we return that favor and pray for you because you. what you're bringing to help us be successful, uh, you've given up time, you've given up energy and to share your experience and to share things will help help us do better, so thank you. We appreciate yeah. that. But you know, when we have passion like we have passion, it doesn't seem like we're giving up much. <laughs> no, no, it doesn't. <laughs> we're just delighted to be here, and I know that I can speak from experience because we had this whole thing in San Antonio, and San Antonio will never be the same, and Phoenix will never be the same. And when you walk down the street and somebody sees that you're an Adventist, they're not going to turn the other way and want to run because they're going to know that you're safe. <laughs>